Before we begin, begin um, we just want to say a little word of trouble for our eyes. Just pray. Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful opportunity where we get to um, give out our testimony. Lord, we pray that you give us prayer. May some life be touched. May somebody be encouraged. May somebody see um, the practicality of moving to the country. But every situation is different. But may ours be a witness that you, our God, who takes care of your children and provide for them. This is my wife especially. At this time, use a prayer Thank you so much. I think there's a feedback. There's an echoing. Is there? Um, can you mute? Yeah, can you mute one of your devices? Hmm. One of them is already muted. Still getting an echo. Yeah, it's like. Echo. Like, whistling. like a whistling echo. Okay, let me yeah. let me let me see. Oh. Does that help? It's better. Yeah, it's definitely better. Yeah, okay. So can everyone see their screen that they're showing? Yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, thanks again for having us. We're excited to be able to share our testimony, um, especially since it has been a blessing to us <laughs> going through the experience. So we are a family of four. Let me just We are family of four. Okay. So our passion was born from our love for nature, studying the word of God, and taking people into nature for camping, hiking, um, prayer retreats, and helping persons draw closer to God. As we made ourselves available to God, he took us country living off grid and has been training us for seven years now. We have been, we have seen the importance of character building and God's ideal way of life. Our desire is to share this experience with everyone. So um, this is basically our ideal. This is basically the, um, we basically ask God to let um, his, ideal for us be, be a reality. So um, this is how we're going to share our testimony with you this evening. Um, okay, sorry about that. Our, how are we gonna share our testimony with you this evening? We're going to go to our life before the country. Then we're going to go to the transition and the country life, and then the ministry. How we, what um, areas that we realized were issues and how it became real to us. We will be sharing a little bit of our journey. So um, I like to give a little disclaimer, like I always say, mm -hmm. we are very, very adventurous family. Yes. Um, not very, um, not the, the normal. Yeah, we may not be the, the example of the ideal way to go country living. Yes. However, it shows that God can take care of his children. So how did we learn about country living? I would say that the first place country living was born for us was way before we got married mm -hmm. in our separate individual life. Mm -hmm. I love nature. My husband loves nature. Mm -hmm. um, I was in the Pathfinder Club. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was always out camping at all the camps and everything like that. And my husband, he grew up in the country. Mm -hmm. So when we met, this would be a typical day. We would just go out um, mm -hmm. in nature. He had a lot of survival skills. Mm -hmm. So he would um, build up a little shelter for us to stay on. We would pack our bags put our bags on our back, and we would be out. Um, we didn't have any right. knowledge of the health message no. um, during that time. We just did the nominal um, adventures. Yeah. Um, so we would go, this is when we were cooking our food, while we were out camping. 
we would pack our bags. Like I said, we would enjoy camping, hiking, just outdoors. outdoors. Yeah. And the other aspect of people our life, yeah, we love taking people too. So yeah. <laughs> people would always want to join us. Like, where are you going next? Mm -hmm. Let's go. That time, I think we were we were Friends. um grand aunt's turtle watching, yeah. where we actually wait for the turtles to come um on shore to see them um nest and lay their eggs. Mm -hmm. Very exciting to be part of it. And we were very, very excited to take persons any time that they felt the need to um join us. And that's why we're still living in this one. Yes, yes, yes. Right. So every single weekend religiously any holiday that we would mm -hmm. come across we would ask ourselves okay where can we go yeah. <laughs> and we would just outside of our obligations to church yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we did like where next okay if we're free this weekend we, we're definitely outside mm -hmm. and persons would call us to find out exactly where we were one of these things one of the things that um this type of lifestyle brought out um a lot was me asking the question hold on um, Sister, sorry. There is still that, uh, I'm sorry, a feedback. feedback, like it's a, a whistling. Um, it's like a, I don't know, I don't know if, uh, it's like a whistling, echoing. Um, I don't know what else it could possibly be, but what I can do, let me try to see if I can switch my audio up a bit. Yeah, maybe you can mute this audio and then um, do another audio because it, it seems like there's multiple audios going on. Um, are you hearing me any better now? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't, you don't hear any feedback. No. Not as much. No, Not no, much. no whistling. I don't hear any whistling. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so then we're gonna, we'll, I guess we can use this one. Yeah. So. What do you think? The camera on that one is not so good. Yeah, so we're using the, the camera on the other one. Okay. So, okay. Um, so one of the things that we experienced as we go and went camping and we went hiking, we were always asking the question, were, you weren't born to just pay bills and die. Because this is what it felt like. We felt like every single um, weekend, we were basically running away from our normal lives. Mm -hmm. And- um, The rough is the college. Yeah, so I was like, why is this? I had, the, I had a good job. Um, I worked in accounts, it paid well. Um, why was I not satisfied? Why wasn't it fulfilling? Mm -hmm. That was the question I was always asking why myself. Yeah, like life. why? Why didn't I enjoy it? This, it was a good job. Why can't I just be satisfied and 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 just love the 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 the, the work? And that was something that I, I I wrestled with all throughout um, our time. And I remember one of the things that really drew this close to home was there was one time a close friend of ours who went camping with us. Um, he passed. We no before he passed. A week before he passed, I remember seeing him and I said, hey, remember, we have to do an outing. It's been such a long time since we've hung out by the mm -hmm. river and we should really do this sometime. I was like, yeah, I've just been so busy. I've got school. As soon mm -hmm. as I'm done with school, I'm going to be right with you guys and I'm going to be um, taking this um, time for vacation. But right now I just I have work up to my neck. The week after that, he passed and I was like kidding me i just spoke to him we just we were supposed to go somewhere together mm -hmm. and this really made me think was i living to the fullest potential was this all there was to life and this is one of the times where um god what started resonating was what is my purpose for me to know exactly how my life supposed to be satisfied how are we supposed to be or what we're supposed to be doing is for us to understand what our purpose was. So um, in all our moments of enjoying nature and um, just spending time outside, we would ask ourselves, what is our real purpose? What does God want us here for? I, I honestly find that we have, especially between the two of us, we have such a vast, we opposite yet we have so many 
um, things that we bring to the table. What could God possibly put us together for? <laughs> and um, um, we continued asking ourselves that question. And the time that it um, really resonated, yes, that's me pregnant. That's before the health message. <laughs> uh, um, so when, um, um, when we were pregnant, our son, this was a time where all of these questions started really putting pressure and we really had to decide what exactly did God want from us? Because right now we have this, um, little human being who's going to be part of our lives. And mm -hmm. if we, our life does not have direction, um, how would we be able to give guide him. exactly mm -hmm. guide him? And give him direction and um one of the things god said when um we um gave birth to our son was you need to train up a child in the way he should go mm -hmm. and when he's old he will not depart from it mm -hmm. and this really resonated with me because i'm like lord i need training <laughs> this is a huge responsibility yeah. like i really do need training how am i going to raise a child and um, God was quite clear. He said, I want you guys to raise your son the way Jesus was raised. And we, we picked up the Zion of Ages. And we're like, okay, let's learn about what Jesus' life was. Yes. And um, we realized that Jesus was raised very close to nature. Mm -hmm. And um, as an adult, he had a lot of time that he was able to spend in ministry because he had that extra mm -hmm. um um, because of the way he lived mm -hmm. so we and home, and yeah so we started to study um his life and we realized that okay if we're gonna bring him out in nature let's let's get ready but let's really get ready to do that so if we had to go to the beach we'd bring out hammocks because we went camping a lot and we'd we'd bring him along from the, from very 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 young mm -hmm. age yes, so um, we're like, Lord, you said he needs to be outdoors. He's going to be outdoors. Yeah, we we live, live in a city. city. So, <laughs> so, so this is the most we can do, yeah. outdoors that we can get him to. Yeah. So we would go by the beach a lot and every other place that we would find a little grass or something that we felt that was up to his level. Because where we used to go was not necessarily yeah, yeah. up to his level. So we would take him out um, a lot to where um we believed god would um approve so um in the way when we started reading desire of ages we realized that this was already confirming our our mindset you weren't you were not born to just work go to work and pay bills and die there There's was more, a purpose there, there was more to life and um with our son it really became Obvious. obvious that this was the the need and so we started to do a lot of um introspecting and saying like mm -hmm. what are the things that are in our life that really needs to to go because if we're going to train up this child in the way he should mm -hmm. go we need to be an example for him to see so um where that though it be he was a lot of, he was basically the catalyst for yes. a lot of the transformation that happened yes, in our life. Because we wanted to be a good example for him. One of the, the times that understanding our purpose and what God wanted for us and his ideal for our life came when we went on a camp. Mm. This is a small cabin in the woods. In the forest. In the forest, yes. <laughs> Quite remote. Um, no internet, no data, no cell No, phone. no service. Yeah. And we went there with a group of friends. Um, not all Seventh-day Adventists, um, not even all um, Christian. And we went, it's, everybody would always ask us, where are you going next? Is Christian, non-Christian? Because they just wanted to know. They just looked at us as the outdoor couple, couple. that really likes to enjoy nature. Yeah, they used to call us the, the single couple. Yeah, because we were always and outside. We, yeah, we, to, we, were, we were like we were dating. Yeah, we were always out. Yeah, out yeah. And these were our outings. So when we went to these things persons always asked us and i remember at this particular prayer camp um the name of that um prayer camp was finding god's purpose for my life and a lot of us came with our our questions for god and mm -hmm. our prayers to god and mm -hmm. um i brought mine as well which was what is my purpose i had an underlying yeah. um 
um, message that God wanted me to leave my job to homeschool my son. But I was like, that's just unrealistic mm-hmm. for God to request. I mean, <laughs> that's so sweat. <laughs> God would not request that of a of a of a. Of a of someone with a a, 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 bo- a, a newborn almost, almost mm-hmm. a year, you know, who wouldn't request that. So it was a, a struggle. So everybody brought their issues. And in this particular camp, all of our lives were changed. Every single one of us, from the Christian to the non-Christian, who had never heard of the Bible or Jesus, he wanted a Bible at the end of that camp. Yes. And um, I was like so happy. There were others who... God had asked them to leave their job because it was not glorifying his name. And they did. And they went into, into ministry. So it was such a blessing. There were those who came out of um, terrible relationships that they were in and were able to go into healthy um, relationships. So I was thinking about like even the, um, the, the health methods of other people. Yes, yes, so yes. Really yes, before, yeah. yes. So little by little, God was um, making the, the changes and he was nudging at the, our hearts. Little by little, as we were asking questions, as we were seeking his face, he was making it clear what his purpose was for our lives. So at that particular camp, while we were ride, driving in, we read a read. yeah, we read a, um, a story oh, um, yeah. um, E.G. White, n- Traveling the Narrow Way. And everybody was touched by that, that story because it was read basically in the, it was in a night driving in and the in road the was darkness, very narrow yeah. and dark. <laughs> and dark. So it's like so, it was experiencing Yeah, you're experiencing what you're reading. Yeah. reading. And the passage that really stood out, for those who don't know the traveling of the narrow way, it's basically Ellen White giving her... A dream she had about like the, the Christian experience in the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it was um, parallel to traveling a very narrow way and it kept yes. getting narrower yes. and narrower. That was the analogy. Yes. And then they had to depend on a, a rope a white rope all the way. Accord. Accord, yes. And they had to get rid of things and different stages of their um, walk. And the passage that really stood out to to Mm -hmm. us in that particular um, chapter of Traveling the Narrow Way, we then thought of those who had not accustomed themselves to privation and hardship. Where were such now? They were not in the company. At every every change, some were left behind and those only remained who had accustomed themselves to endure hardship. The privation of the way only made these more eager to press on to the end. I don't think we can ever explain how comfortable. Yes, these words words have been. And I remember studying those words and thinking there is something in there for us, specifically for us. And it wasn't that we, um, we liked that type of lifestyle, yes, but there was something more than just the surface adventure, which we were experiencing. Okay. We were, I, I was asking, could God be using this to mm-hmm. prepare us for something more? Mm-hmm. He had brought us together, my husband and myself especially. So the decision was cemented. God had asked me to take the sacrifice and leave my job. My husband agreed that this was a step that we needed to take. He got, after much deliberation. Yes, we took a year before we made that. Yeah, after much prayer and deliberation, yes. considering all the possibilities, and then, then just decided to work on it. Yeah, it was not, it did not seem like the best financial decision yeah. because my husband has a joiner, a car painter, he works based on projects. So when the house comes, he builds it, when that house is done, he, he basically waits for the next project. But my mm-hmm. job in accounts was the, the fixed salary, which was, was needed. So me leaving was a very, very big thing. And uh, the reason we got to that point was because God had done something very amazing. I had asked him to give me directions to a particular location because I needed his help. And he gave me step 
by step directions mm -hmm. all the way to the house telling me two steps an audible voice, to an audible voice. Mm -hmm. and after that experience i said lord anything you ask me to do anything I'm because done. If you can give me directions to a house that I've never been to before, I had yes. asked everybody for directions and you gave me, and I'm somebody that gets lost very easily. Yeah, you were able, me. yeah, you, <laughs> you were able to give me directions step by step from what vehicle to take and everything. What if I give you my entire life to manage like this? Yeah. What would become of it? Mm -hmm. And the first thing he asked me when I, um, the first thing he said was leave your job. I'm like, I mean, I say I'm going to give you my entire life. I didn't think you would just take the, the thing <laughs> that we depended on. So um, a year later, like I said, at that prep camp, the decision was cemented. Yeah. God had asked us to leave our job, to basically sacrifice that job for our son to home. I think the catalyst was you got to a point where um, you had to choose between listening to something religious or... Your yes. so, yeah. so I had to, God basically told me I had to choose between the two. Is mm -hmm. either the job or you listen? And I'm like, okay, Lord, I'm we're done. going, we're we going to do this. I'm done. And this became the, the, the catalyst to our move and our, this, the, even the discussions of country mm -hmm. living, because then when we left, I left the job and we were home with my son. My husband was getting projects and they were coming mm -hmm. in really good. Yeah, well done. But then they stopped for a while. Together, yeah. And they were quite abrupt. And I remember asking God, but Lord, you know this is what sustains us. How mm -hmm. could you just let it um, end so abruptly? And what his message was to us directly was, I need you to move into the country. Yeah. I told you I want you to raise your son the way Jesus was raised. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but Lord, I thought we were doing that. Yeah. We brought him <laughs> to the beach and to other places that's country-like. Yeah. But we didn't want to take him like into the country. Country, you know? Uh, I don't know. We didn't think of that. And it was then that we really understood that there needed to be the move. Yeah. And I remember uh, my parents were, are you sure about this? You leaving your job and then you just going into a place that you've never really been to. Are you sure about this? And I'm like, if you, if you, you need a place to stay, you can um, stay by yeah, us. Yeah, that, yeah. Um, the church family were like, already you had left your job and we were a little iffy about that. Yeah. And uh, we didn't, we us didn't care with you guys yeah, when we saw then, the jobs going through, but now oh, you want to leave this? Yeah, yeah. I think at the time most people believe that country living was something far down in the future. Yes, and it's no need to. Yeah, try and why? yeah, and persons also believe that it's not even necessary. Yes, so it was. There was a lot of. We were alone. Yes. alone. So, like there were no Seventh Day Adventists. I, I found that really were in looking to go to the country yes it was something I, I like that we business. looked at maybe to be done in the future mm -hmm. but like Not now. why are you doing this now yeah why? you bring in persecution upon, upon yourself, yourself. before what, yes. yes before the <laughs> before time, the time. That's <laughs> what is that was, yeah. and i remember saying but god is the one who told us and that we should you know it was basically to, to raise our son this way this was what he said so this is why we had to do it so in in, in transitioning, okay. so in transitioning, um, we had to get rid of the TV. Mm -hmm. We started doing research on the health message, yeah. the healthier lifestyle. Downsizing. Yeah, we started downsizing. We started focusing on creating the Christian environment to raise our son mm -hmm. because it was it seemed like this was God's emphasis. Okay, we you need to raise in the way Jesus was raised. So I was like, okay. Yeah. What okay, Mary mean? had to know something about yeah, the Bible. Okay, so do? let me let me find out yeah. what these things are. So I'm like, for sure, she's not watching these kind of TV shows that I'm watching. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> so I have to put this aside. I have to get rid of this. Mm -hmm. um, and while I was pregnant, the way God helped us to understand the health message, I could not eat any meat. I could mm -hmm. not eat any. Yeah, it any causes cheese. the throw up. I would it. throw up and get sick. I couldn't eat any of the things that I would normally eat. And um, I was like, what? These are the things I enjoy eating. I can't even have them while I'm pregnant. And I did not understand that God was basically purging my body 
and allowing me to understand the health message mm-hmm. and the healthier lifestyle. To the point where when you understood the health message, when the pregnancy was continuing, you were losing weight. Yeah. My doctor was quite surprised. She's like, you, you're, you're not getting black. You're losing the weight because you, you're not getting blacker. You don't get any blacker. You're already you, black. Yeah. <laughs> and you're getting lighter and you're losing weight. Like, what is happening? Yeah, so God was better. making those changes in our life mm-hmm. and helping us to do so. So spiritually, we learned that there was no better path to take than the one that God had laid before us. So he has a special purpose for each and every oh, one of us. And one of the things that we were um, very, very, uh, we sought to find out was what does he want for us mm-hmm. specifically? Yeah, was- Lord, what do you want for us? Where, what, how can we um, be better vessels to mm-hmm. even learn what you're trying to teach us? Yeah. So we started reading the Bible. We started worshiping mm-hmm. on a morning and on an evening, mm-hmm. praying together and mm-hmm. just allowing God to transform our lives so that we would be ready to be parents to our son. Yeah. So in the transitioning period as well, we had to learn. <laughs> because, very much <laughs> yeah, so we were saying god okay so, you want us to go country living we know we don't have any money mm-hmm. let's start learning some stuff to add to what we've already been learning okay. from our living life. okay um our weekends yeah every um and okay, if sports okay. well on the weekends yeah we use our survival skills to go mm-hmm. backpacking and camp so out just take the map point at any spot that looks um, remote and go yeah. to yeah. so now we had to do a a little bit of a transitioning so now it's going to be more permanent it's a permanent um yeah. <laughs> basically a permanent um, because we had no money and we, we won't be buying any land so no. we didn't know what god was going to provide but i guess we knew not having money what could you possibly afford, afford? and i remember so we planned for the worst yeah that's what we did, yeah. we did. so we started thinking of alternatives we'll yeah we started looking at alternative sources of energy um, putting off the, the power to our apartment sometimes. See how long we can live without it. Yeah, recycling um, repurposing. and repurposing items like our old stove and using Shopping. our survival skills and sharpening them in other areas. So this is our old stove. You call it old stove. It, it was, was a, a good stove. stove. <laughs> a small stove, but a perfectly good stove. But we... we... And you, you, well, you had the idea. Go ahead. That we could try. Mm-hmm. using it as instead no, of you have to say that you <laughs> had the idea i had the idea yeah. that we take I it outside and we try making it a wood burning Very oven or stove to retire, I'm like, <laughs> that sounds possible and this was it so we put the 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 wood in there where you see the the red fire and on the other picture you see the oven yeah. um opened and we would bake the bread yeah the the, the fire would pass through the inner walls and go up for a chimney. So the fire wouldn't actually go into that. Um, um, the bread making the chamber. Bread-making chamber. But it still had the wood flavor oh, yes. that you like in a, a stone oven. Yeah. So this is a short video of what it looks like and how it, it works. And you can tell we live in the city. So this was one of our um, cooking Experiment. alternative Experiment. <laughs> experiments. That worked. And it didn't burn. You didn't get smoke. It worked. We expected, it worked pretty well. Yeah, it worked pretty well. We expected to be a lot of smoke because you're using um, wood. wood mm-hmm. But amazingly, it didn't 
spring and we were in like the middle of the city. Yeah, and so you haven't mentioned the fact that the young people were coming. Oh, yes, and the young people would enjoy coming from over from the church because we like, yeah, we live on the other side of the church, like on the main road. Yeah, so the young people would come over and we make bread and we um, um, bake pizza and all that type of stuff. And when we would take them camping, and there were very, there were a lot of ways that we decided to use that we could cook even when we went to the country. So these were experiments that we did even before we actually moved into the country. Mm-hmm. So this is basically a log. A Swedish torch. A, yeah, a Swedish torch. Um, my husband splits mm-hmm. and I've had and I used the wire. Well, I didn't have a chainsaw at the time. So it would be much easier to do a chainsaw, but you split it and I tied it so I wouldn't break apart. And you light the fire in the middle. And you put the pan. And you put the pan on there. Yeah, so by the time the pan of water is done, you're you you're good. With yeah, your, your, your it, it's pretty hot. It cooks pretty fast. So the other option that we, we considered was getting solar panels because we knew that we yeah had not solar panels just but solar yeah panels. like on the backpack. So when yeah. we went camping, we would take a small solar panel yes, with so us. So we could charge and stay in touch in case we need a help or emergency. So we just yeah, took. I miss that blade, girl. Yeah. So we just took a bigger one, a little bigger, yeah. and we got that one for charging up our phones, and then we got a different one. Well, that was donated to us. Yes, for charging was, our lights. Yeah, somebody really liked our lifestyle, and he said, "I have this solar light that I don't use," and he donated that to us. It's light there last it's eight hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we had three of them. Yes. Yeah. So that was a blessing. So we looked at the alternative sources of energy in you know, our transitioning to understand what we would be getting ourselves into. The other way that we transitioned was starting to downsize. Mm-hmm. In mm-hmm. our apartment, we decided to um, quarantine ourselves in one area of the apartment. Yeah, small, uh, small section. And we tried to see how long uh-huh. we could live there. We also tried to see how long we could... Um, stay without electricity as well that's right so we put off the power in our apartment mm-hmm. and we'd see how long could we stay in there i think during that time we started packing up yeah we didn't know where we we're gonna go um i think we listened to lemon has a sermon where he says that he said he didn't coin the term but he said if it's god's will it's god's will mm-hmm. and we believe that god was fully able to provide so we started packing up and we had not a clue where we were, where gonna we were going not at, not at all yeah. so um, what we did do, we didn't have any other Seventh-day Adventists who had their country living homes, which you could have visited. Okay. But what we did do was go to a, a farm of a friend oh, yes. um, who loved the outdoors, mm-hmm. similar to us. And, and she basically invited us on her farm. Yeah. And that day she was basically teaching us how they did their bowls. Because when we went there to eat with them, to experience the farm she took us around she harvested Mm -hmm. some of the food she told us about her own experience of living her job because she didn't feel satisfied can i add that she was the only voice of encouragement at the time yes she was a non-seven adventist was the only voice of encouragement while most persons were saying nah country living don't do it yeah so she taught us how to make our own calabash bowls because we were we were we knew that God wanted us to move off grid, so we were looking at all the ways that we would have to sustain. be able to sustain ourselves, at knowing cost. fully that we would not have any money. Well, to, not as much at least. At, yes, to be able yeah. to buy everything that we would need. Yeah. So we started learning how to make our own bowls. So we would cut a calabash when we were at her place. We cut the calabash in half, and um, then you scrape out all of the stuff that's inside. Then you we use the um, turmeric to, make, um, to, nice to give it the color and to make it um, nice and um, mm-hmm. dry. And we put it in the sun, time. and then you have your bowls, your bowls, and then you can put in your food and something similar to this. What she cooked for us from the from the um yeah. the farm, the breadfruit. Actually, for that was the actual picture. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's what she prepared for us today, yeah, and we yeah. had that in our calabash bowls, and we were like wow this is amazing i really want to live like this yeah and so we were very very encouraged yeah because she had left her job and she said that um the she was able to buy 
like 10 times more property because she was living in a country where as she would get have gotten a small lot mm -hmm. if she had to buy land closer to the city. So she was really encouraging to us. She was saying like, this is a good idea. This is a good idea. Yeah, and she, she hasn't regretted her decision. Yes. And so when we found out about the calabash bowls and all of these things like yes we have our cups we have our um we have our bowls we know and, how we're gonna get bowls yeah <laughs> so we made our checklist we're like okay we have to get a calabash tree so we started making the plan yeah. in our head as to how we we're going to move really minimalistic because we knew um yeah. we knew that with using um, yeah, we knew that we would have been um off grid and we wanted a, to prepare for it. Mm -hmm. We knew that the skills that God had given us, he would have expected us to at least utilize it. Yeah, to demonstrate so, what that kind of country living is like. Exactly. Because so, a lot of persons have the finances and they can do this really <laughs> nice country. And what about the people that don't have money? Exactly. Yeah, and that's where we fit in. We were the demonstrators of what, how do you go country living with no money? Okay, so another thing that we had to consider was it was kind of a dramatic move yeah. everybody saw it as drastic yeah. because we went from living in the, city. in the city basically on the main road yes to packing up and going out into the country on basically raw land with the goal and aim to make it, into something. make it into something so it was very worrying for um i guess our Most church friends it. and we were excited else. though we yes we were excited we were excited this is like we would come every weekend this is like camping a lifestyle yes so we had we had watched a lot of diy videos and we were practicing a lot of the things that we um learned we started we learned about the minimalistic lifestyle how we we're going to cook how we're going to rain harvest. We started practicing that mm -hmm. as well. That's true. We've got some um, rain barrels and everything. So then it was, are you actually ready to go out into the country? Yeah. And in 2015, October, we decided, yes. We packed up a truck and we brought all of our stuff from the city and just packed it on to our um, the location that we were going to be moved mm -hmm. in. This is a passage that really um, encouraged us. In Christian experience, the Lord permits trials of various kinds to call men and women to a higher order of living and to a more sanctified service. Without these trials, there would be a continually falling away from the likeness of Christ and men would become imbued with a spirit of scientific fanciful human philosophy which would lead them to unite with satan's followers so, so we under we did not understand completely yet that <laughs> this was going to be our experience our, our testimony. <laughs> yes our <laughs> testimony but in hindsight this was what we learned would have been our experience mm -hmm. so as it pertains to our um when we moved into the country we chose to, instead of going to look for a job, we chose to work the land mm -hmm, prepare the place. and prepare the place and get ourselves settled. Yes. Our aim was, since we had basically $300 mm -hmm. and the remnants of my husband would workshop, um, mm -hmm. this was what we had. And all of the, the barrels that we'd said we were going to use for rain harvesting, our mm -hmm. solar panels, our clothes, and some food storage. All in barrels. All in barrels. We came down with very um, little. Mm -hmm. And our aim was to get out of debt because we had a little bit of debt in the, the city to clear off our, our rental apartment. Mm -hmm. And what we intended to do was to settle onto the land cultivate it as we we got there since we would have no bills mm -hmm. every any income that we would make would be used to get out of debt and of course to take care of ourselves and because we live so simple yes because mm -hmm. we live so simple so we intended to use our food storage and plant so we started we learned about what food would grow in what spaces of time what mm -hmm. food would you get in a month what would you need to grow 
long-term. Me long-term. We both had skills that would allow us to work away from a physical location. Yeah. So I am a writer as well as um, I do accounts and I have um, business skills as well, mm -hmm. um, business management. So, right so um, I... In the beginning, when we just got there, we did not do anything. We were like probably the first couple of months, we were intensively trying to get a uh, settle I settling. Say, you never mentioned how we got to this. So. Oh, yes, I did. I, oh, sorry. I let that part out. Yeah. Um, at the time when we were searching, um, I spoke to him. I was, well, I was having a conversation with my dad. And I told him, you know, I'm really looking to, to move out of the city and to move in the country. Does the family have any land that I don't know about that I can move on to. And he was telling me there's this land um, far up in the hills, you know, but he'll take me there, he'll take me there and show me the place, but he don't think that I should go and live there. And I went to look at a place and it's really steep and everything. And I'm, I'm like, guess Lord, if that's, that's what you're providing <laughs> for me, I guess I'll do it, but this doesn't look right. But then in conversation with him, he eventually told me, you know, there's this other property, you know, lower down, um, you could you could live there if anybody ever tells you anything. Just tell him your dad, your father told you to be there. Um, this so was that, where he lived. Yeah, that's where, where he was he raised lived. as a child. As a so boy. then that's where we are now. So then, um, so we were packed up. We didn't know where we were going. A conversation with my dad. I learned that there was land that 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 I could have been on, and I thank God for that. So we we because of how it happened. Um, it was the only option that God put in our, in our, in, our yes. in front of us at the time. Yes. There was nothing else that he presented. Um, so we decided we're going to make the move. And the, one of the ways that God confirmed that it was that particular location was. Yes. He, God told us to go where your food is coming yes, from. Yes, because um, things had gotten bad in the city. Now, this is, this is strange. Right? Things had gotten bad in the city for us because the work had stopped coming in. I used to go down there um to get food mm -hmm. to bring up because it's a it's a it's an abandoned farm kind of mango grove so i used to go down there to get food for the family often um not really planting anything no. there. it's just so, just going to harvest and stuff so then yeah so then when god said where the food come from that was a no-brainer like i yeah. know i know where our food yes he opened the exact location based on your conversation yes that. Like that, yeah. so these two things went hand in hand I was like okay lord this is the place that you and want us to be then fine oh, so, yeah. um the soil had a lot of work that's a recent picture right? yes it is so, so <laughs> this is what we started with yeah that's the good part lower yes. down was orange didn't have any worms yeah not a worm was found when we were plowing so that was orange soil that is looking like this is the recent picture i see the aloes this but that's mm -hmm. the recent picture um, of part of where we got it. Yeah. So we started, we yeah. we made our main focus before we focused on the house. We wanted to, to ensure that we had a, a garden. So um, we started planting and deciding on where everything would be. So designated a, a, plot, a space. And then this was what, this was a small cabin that his dad grew up in as yes. a boy. On that was on the land. Yeah, where, this is where we live. This yeah. whole cabin was ever like a hundred years old. Yeah, whilst we built our, our cabin. Yes. Yeah, so we really stayed in this one yeah. and uh, we stored our stuff in there mm -hmm. while we waited, while we um started building our own. We didn't have any money, so we knew that yeah. this was the, the option that we had. And a lot of us in the Caribbean, when we come to country live we don't always have the option especially those that don't have funds mm -hmm. of finding a location with houses on yes. it or with a cabin on it let me just add because we moved down there i was able to get a job in sufre and i was able to, and we were able to buy some more material mm -hmm. and because we live so simply like we were saving every dollar because i remember at the time we used to go into the supermarket and say whoa we're not buying that we're not buying that we don't need that we're growing that we're growing that so then our, I think we used to just buy flour and rice and salt mm -hmm. and peas or something like that. That's all we used to buy. So then we we're able to save all the money, pay all, up, all our debt, and we able to buy some more materials to build um, our own cabin. Our own cabin. So um, in the Caribbean, land goes for 
like $15,000 per acre and more. And when you find um, that's a, country, that's about the lowest. Yeah, you lost, you'll ever yeah. get it. And at $15,000, you're not looking at electricity, you're not looking at water. running water. No, it's, 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 it's remote. Yeah, it's abandoned farm or just never used property. Virgin land, basically. Yes. So we knew that um, with God taking us through this process, if we were able to go through it, we knew that he could provide. Uh, provide for other persons to go through it, or he can put us in a position where we can help others to go through it as well. So um, we basically had to build a cabin with um, hand tools. Yeah, well, that's the second cabin. No? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, the garden and the home, the places that we built it, were because of this was the place that God had provided for us. Um, when it came to homeschooling, our son was basically with us in every little step of the way. Um, one of the, 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 the things that had happened in our experience that really shook, especially my faith, was when my son fractured the um, fractured his leg and that was early on in the move yes that was really early in the move and um i remember thinking to god like lord how could you allow this to happen we had basically we were obedient you were the yeah. one who told us to go a out hairline there fracture, uh, yeah it was a hairline fracture but i was still like lord how could you allow this yeah, to happen you never expected any bad thing to happen exactly because you know we're living by faith and obeying the uh, obeying the commands of the man yeah. so how could bad things happen i mean come on so <laughs> when this happened we were we were very devastated and the i trials. remember um i felt like god had just pulled a rug from underneath us and i this was when satan was really pressing on my heart like maybe y'all should just leave that alone yeah you have a good enough a resume you could just go well. back and get a job put your son in school and just forget about this i mean it was an adventure yes hippie parade you did this yeah. you can take it off your bucket list and just go back to living a normal life yeah. and it was really pressing upon my heart um those things and these are the passages that really stood out to encourage comfort. and comfort in those times mm -hmm. i was brought to the great disappointment at the point where Jesus did not come. Mm -hmm. They had done the will of God in following the guidance of his spirit and his word. Yet they could not understand his purpose in their past experience, nor could they discern the past before them. And this is how I felt at the time. This is how we felt like, Lord, I don't even understand why you allowed this to happen. You never expected this. I didn't expect this. Mm -hmm. They were tempted to doubt God. And so were we. I was at the point where I'm like, Lord, I don't even know if what to believe anymore. Mm -hmm. And at that particular time, but now bowed down by disappointed hopes, they could stand only by faith in God and in his word. The scoffing words were saying you had been deceived give up your faith and say that the Advent movement was a, of Satan. But God's word was declared. If any man draw back, my soul shall no, have oh, no pleasure in him. And I started going back and studying. Lord, wow. did I misunderstand your leading? Was it not you telling us? all throughout this experience that this is where we were supposed to do mm -hmm. you were the one guiding us at every point yeah. if we look stupid now lord it's on you you're the one who told yeah. us to be there at this time and that's when we understood the ministry of trials yes yeah to renounce their faith now and deny the power of the holy spirit which had attended the message would be drawing back towards perdition they were encouraged to steadfastness by the words of Paul. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Ye have need of patience for yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Their only safe course was to cherish the light which they had already received from God, hold fast to his promises, and continue to search the scriptures. And that is exactly what we did. Patiently waiting. I can remember you, we used to say that, thank God that um, we can doubt and have this 
is down moments when actually there's no sandalwood and it's not like our our souls mm -hmm. it's under the close of probation yeah it's not the close of probation and it was okay to 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 go through this and doubt and go through these these hard times because if if maybe if we had waited until the close of probation to do this it would have move, maybe we'd have gone back yeah because i would believe that moving at the close of probation is a much rougher mm -hmm. a much more um primitive move if anything else and this was a very difficult time. And one of the things we said, even when everybody was discouraging us, because you could think our church family, our home family could be like, I told you guys, yeah. this was this was not the, the thing I was supposed to be yeah. doing anyway. I'm sure, I'm sure now God has let that happen to you guys. I'm yeah. hoping you're going to learn the lesson. But instead, God used these passages to encourage us and tell us, yeah. no, you need to continue to go forward. I'll, this is where I want you. I want to say that um, one thing that also stayed on my mind was there was this one brother who said, if not you guys to move into the country in Senesha, who will? Yeah. Who should? Who will? Because we were the nature couple. We were the people that was always Everybody, in the yeah. forest. The survival um, is. The survival is always gonna come. If not you guys, who? And then that really, yeah. really, really struck a chord. So, what has been our experience, country living? Oh, it has been a lot of fun. Um, I see our lovely picture of the garden. Um, I guess I can explain how we got the garden. Mm -hmm. After we discovered that um, the land was not that, uh, we started practicing trying many different um, processes to try to get the land to produce food, but eventually realized that just observing nature and paying attention to nature is what really, really works. So then we knew of yoga culture and puma culture and horticulture and many cultures. They have many cultures, <laughs> not only agriculture, they have many cultures. Agriculture is just more popular. So then we, we decided we're gonna combine all of the things we knew into gardening to give us our best um, um, chance of having a successful garden. Because stuff wasn't really growing down there. Yeah, people told us stuff was not growing. Yeah, there. my father told me, you wouldn't grow anything there. But you ain't gonna grow anything there. And we've grown everything there. Yes. So then what we did, we did, um, we dug ditches for every bed, every ditch, every bed. So what we did, we dug ditches and we placed um, rotten um, wood um, from all the trees we had to cut down to clear out, to get light into the place. We, we cut them down and at the time we didn't have a chainsaw. So the smallest piece yeah, of Yeah, so we cut them, we dig, so we dug ditches for every bed. Then we'll cut them down to smaller, smaller pieces. And that's my son. If he's axe, don't tell him it's not axe. <laughs> don't tell him it's not axe. And so that's me trying to cut down a lot of labor. Um, I became healthier. I, I detox down there. Yeah, everything was a lot more primitive. Yeah, I had a lot more energy though. I ate, we ate two meals a day. Yes. And we had a lot of energy. That makes yes. no sense, but that's yes. how it was. So what we do is cut um cut the logs would be the first layer. And that's the reason for that is so even when there's drought, those rotten logs would have soaked in water so that when even though there's a drought, your plants would still have a reservoir down in the soil. Yeah, so these logs will go yeah. into the ditch. After <laughs> that, then we'll cover the logs with as much organic matter as possible. Um, I guess if they come to our yeah, that was, seminar that you get more detail, but yeah, this is the rough one. So then we we'll put as much organic material there, green and brown, the green is for nitrogen, I don't think not now. So then um and then we'll would cover it back up with soil, they would lay a compost over it. Um, we would make our own compost because we can't get to buy compost readily yeah, in yeah. Senegal and in federal countries. Let me tell you, you have to be quite um, I'm creative, and that's why we say creative is our friend. So you can see the bed down there that is not covered yet is the mango leaves from the prune trees, and this one is covered. And I'm now putting compost on on on. Yeah, that's on a black little patch there. And then this was the result. This is um, oh yeah. After we put the compost, I would cover everything with leaves. Because we try to make the forest, the forest floor is always covered. And this helps with suppressing weeds and it's it's feeding the soil. But, um, I don't expire. Yeah. Yeah, I really it. So then this is what worked for us um, with collaboration, manual, and everything. And we went from not being able to grow food yeah. to having abundance and, and growing all kinds.
Yeah, things that people said they could even not grow. Corn, like. which is um, uh, uh, heavy if you know, yeah, if you know farming, corn is a heavy feeder. Organic corn, that is. Oh, to the point where we're able to grow corn. I, you still can grow corn on your soil. And cabbage. And cabbage, which, yeah. Mm -hmm. And papaya, which somebody told me, they have, my uncle told me, has tried growing it there. And it didn't grow. So then, the yeah, we still have, and it tastes pretty good. <laughs> so then, yeah, this is, this is, um, so this was our garden experience. Um, we had a lot of experimentation. We tried to make our own version of the rocket stove, not using concrete this time, but using um, clay because concrete is something you have to buy. And, and you look for what is available around ready, you. Yes, readily available. And each case has a friend. So this is a rocket stove that we made. Um, this is another stove that we had where you use um, um, uh, a transmission and you have charcoal in there. And you can cook. Um, one of the ideas, I, one of the things I could do on camp, I, I would be able to make an oven out of almost anything. I don't even have all the pictures. Out of stone, galvanized, whatever we find, um, wherever we go camping, I'll be able to make an oven out of it. So that's one oven we did back in the day. Um, and what it, it basically demonstrates is, and I remember what we told the, the, the persons that we're going camping with, Go and get all the scrap that you can possibly Yeah, find. we'll make stuff out of it. We're going to make something <laughs> out of this. And this was the concept that we use in our country living experience. All of the scrap, everything yes. that you can scavenge, bring them all over, yeah. assess what you have, and let us see yeah. what we can make with Creativity it. Creativity is the, is the biggest result. Yes. And Not this, finances, because we didn't allow the lack of finance to limit yes. what we would be able to do. Yeah. So this is basically when they came up with all of the scrap, all of the stones. Yeah. This was what we were able to make. Yeah, and we we baked we baked in there. Yeah. I mean, you could see stuff even burning. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, but this is the the mud oven that we built, and I see bread there. Yeah, we the baked side. bread. Let me tell you, we yeah. made pizza in there. Yeah. And it was amazing because one yeah. of the things that we noticed when we were on that property. We had a lot of clay. Yeah, that's that's why so, things are not growing because it's clay. <laughs> exactly. So one of the things when you find that something is a detriment to you and yeah. you can't grow because of it, yes. you can take it and, and make turn it, yes. turn it into something. Every every um there's a rule that says every problem is a solution opportunity. Yeah. Every problem is a solution of opportunity. So the problem was food wasn't growing because the soil is really bad. However, that problem that problem is uh you have an abundance of food. Mm -hmm. So we made use of it. So we made use of clay rocket stove. Um, we got to the point where the Lord blessed us to have um, the funds to buy a chainsaw. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even remember how we got the funds, but yeah, um, we were able to buy a chainsaw. So then stuff became easier. Um, we were able to cut down some trees. Um, here's my wife milling away. Um, so that stuff we couldn't. We I I was a joiner for most for most of my adult life, but I am still a joiner now. And that's the part of journey I never got to do. That's I always wanted to do that. But now that we were in the country, we had those opportunities. Um, something else we pick up um, after moving to the country was beekeeping, to the point where now persons call us. Well, it's been a while. The world hasn't come yet, but persons would call us to come and take out beehives um, in their homes or roofs, what have you. And uh, this is a picture. Some people might might not enjoy this, but this is a picture of one of the hives. That we took out um, mm -hmm. from somebody, and this is our new addition, Ellie. Um, this is a picture inside. Eli is washing his dishes, and and this is a picture from inside the house. So we continue to learn God's ideal, and when we um, were giving birth to our daughter, we decided to have a home birth. Yeah. And of course, when God said that we should do that, we were like, "Oh, Lord, you." always give us the weird things the to do. The craziest thing to do with yeah. us. And <laughs> it's not so crazy with our home Yeah, day. so in doing the research and um, my husband was basically the, my mid-husband. Mid yeah. <laughs> so um, it was a beautiful experience. It was a very, very beautiful experience. And um, I look much healthier than the, the last um, pregnancy. Um, um, pregnancy because we did it God's way. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that... Um, it was it, it really sounds weird because give um giving birth off grid especially at home there was a lot imagine having 
the stove outside the oven the stove, the stove outside yeah and you have to bring in like you need hot towels so you have to go outside get the hot towels so, I had to inside. Be, I had to be so my husband was and outside, outside and inside and I was just, time, ah. <laughs> there's a point where i almost gave up and yes like, too much work but i'm like oh she can't say that yes so, yeah, so, I so push god's way is the is the the best way and one of the things that um um we realized and especially for work, we used our writing. Um, when my writing, my husband used his skills in building, in, building, in fabricating, fabricating. Yeah, I'm and putting my hands. Just putting everything me. that we found. Um, A challenge. Yeah. So one of the things that we started selling was our dry coconuts, yeah. and we would sell our fruits, and all of these things were were income that we could use. Mm-hmm. And because we lived a very minimalistic lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Um, we had no choice but to be made. The, w- the job was not necessarily the main priority. No. So when we lived in the Family city, time. the main priority was the you job. need to have a job because you have to pay the bills. You have to pay the bills. You have to pay that rent. Okay. But with us living out in the country where we didn't have any bills, work was an yeah. option. But we could have lived comfortably with less. Yeah. Yeah. Less money. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. So working was not necessarily you had to do a nine to five every single day for the rest of your life. It was something you could choose to do today and Mm -hmm. not do tomorrow. So this was the flexibility that we, that we really appreciated Mm -hmm. in our, in living um, the way that we did. Yes. So let me share a little bit with you what we learned about, especially Now we now do, and especially what we learned as it put into country living in the Caribbean yeah. specifically. Well, we always had a ministry, but now it's more fine-tuned. We now we know exactly more of our people. Yeah, where we fit. Where do you fit? Yes. Yeah. So more and more as time advances, our people will have to live the cities. For years, we have been instructed that our brethren and sisters, and especially families of children, should plan to leave the cities as the way opens before them to do so. Many will have to labor earnestly to help open the way. And when we read this, it was like, yes, Lord, here we are. Pick me. We can help you in any way that's necessary to Mm -hmm. earnest to help others and what we noticed is there were certain problems in St. Lucia especially Mm -hmm. and I'm sure outside of St. Lucia as well that prevented persons from moving out into the country. We noticed that the lack of skill was one of the reasons why persons were shying away from Mm -hmm. moving out in the country. After living in the city for so long, a period of time, it was intimidating to go straight out into the country for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. There was also a fear of being alone that is cultured in us. We always want to have a a neighbor. We always want to have a friend um, close by that's not too far away. We're cultured into being afraid of everything. Yes. You're afraid of snakes. You're afraid of everything. Because even when we were going camping and hiking, people always ask us, you're not afraid of going down there? I'm like, Mm -hmm. you're going by yourself? It's like, yeah, but we kind of, I'm not going by myself. He's not going by himself. We're We're going with each other. So I don't know. (laughs) We're not by ourselves. (laughs) So there's a fear of being alone that um, I think we heard, um, we had already crossed that hurdle. Yeah. Um, so, we enjoy being alone. Yeah, so, <laughs> so we noticed that this was something that families experienced and this made it a very difficult for them to, to make that move. We saw also that there's a lack of resources as well. Not everybody has the cash to be able to just buy something up yeah. front, a uh, land or, or a house. Or what they find, like, it might be put more land than they wouldn't to live with or can't afford it it's because yes. of the size. Yes. Yeah. And so we also saw that there's an inability to see land potential as well in the Caribbean. Like we said earlier, in St. Lucia especially, there is... A the country living locations that you would find are usually farmland, which is undeveloped, usually abandoned without electricity, running water, or any of that sort. Okay, and no, not no, no, no. many persons are very no, no. Um, good with seeing the alternatives mm-hmm. of electricity and what that can be used to develop the land. A lot of persons just cannot see what the land can become. 
So that was something else that we noticed. And then land and house became too expensive. Land and house, especially in the Caribbean, which is a, a tourist destination, mm -hmm. is very expensive. Because the market more to the, to the international yes, market audience, yeah. than the local. So for persons to go out into the country, they would have a lot, they would have a, a huge mortgage most of the time. Oh, they if they're to going to consider a lot more. Yeah. If they're going to consider it's buying a house and land um, up front. So this is something that um, these are some of the problems that we noticed. And our as a ministry and as a couple, we we wanted to to help persons to go through this experience. It's supporting. Supported at least. You know, so that they knew that somebody went before and somebody had gone through it and we could create an environment that would better able um, persons to live in the country and not have those fears and not have these problems as problems. But they could understand that there was there could be solutions if they open their mind up to it. Um, so the projects that um, we do to that God has put in our plate to help with those problems that we noticed were we search for land that fulfill the blueprint as as a um, as a ministry. So right now we have there's a 15 acre um, piece of land that is conducive for country living that families have that we can tax that we can tax other families and say hi guys are you interested in this particular property it has a river bordering it it has some streams coming through it um we can be purchased as a whole and then it can be partitioned and everybody else will be having their own piece so that it can be um everybody can have their country living location because um most persons cannot afford a full oh, 15 acre, acre lot or a 40 acre lot because, because the price that would come to like 200 and something thousand yeah. dollars in ec so or 20 or whatever. yeah so it's it's really costly for for anyone on their own on their own so this is one of the things that we provide to solve this problem we also provide access to resourceful resource persons ourselves and also others that can assist in mm -hmm. persons developing their land. We also provide consultation to give um, families a head start in their country living move. We also provide support in the various stages of the country living journey, whether it be for home building or harvesting trees, rain harvesting, designing advice for the land and for the home, and even cost calculations as well. We provide Bible studies, and of course, prayer is important for every single thing that we do in this country living move. So we have a prayer line every Sabbath, which encourages families and other persons to share their experiences. And since then, God has shown us a location for an outpost center well, that's a to be itself, yes, huh? established yeah. in St. Lucia so that we can have these trades available mm -hmm. so families can learn these skills and mm -hmm. learn all of these things so it does not always have to be on zoom mm -hmm. or online but peace persons can come and actually be hands-on in building the home yeah. in felling the trees yeah. in turning the trees from um trees to, to lumber, lumber to so um to be learning the medical missionary work mm -hmm. so this is a property that we've been praying to god to provide, to provide um, he's already it, shown it to us. Yeah, he so. showed it to us. So um, the wonderful thing about it as well is um that that property has resources. Yes. That property has resources. This somebody somebody once said this is like buying money. Yes. 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 yes, so, and, yes. It has yeah. industry on it already. Yes, it has a lot. It has everything. Yeah. I can go for everybody's property. So in summary, we just want to encourage everyone that you are not alone. There are those who have gone before and are willing to help families to set up their country living um, properties, especially in the Caribbean. Um, so this is the team. Okay. <laughs> this is us. This is this is the team. And um, the skills that run between us as a family, we have management, really accounting, marketing, writing, life coaching. Um, relationship coaching, construction, joinery, carpentry, arborist, um, organic farming, 
survivalist, navigating, orienting, wilderness guide. So these, to name a few, few. <laughs> these are the skills that God has blessed us with. Yeah, some and of them we had before and some of them we, we learned. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yes. So these are some of the things that God has um, blessed us with. And we would like to be a blessing to others in whatever way that we can in this country living journey. We even add medical missionary. Oh, yeah, medical missionary. I didn't even add that in there. Yeah. <laughs> so they might be stopping now. Yeah, well, thank you for the opportunity, though. Thanks again for the opportunity to share. Yeah.